What's up, everybody? Welcome to Metal Remains Backstage. My name is Manuel, and with me is my friend and colleague, Carlos Cortez. Hi, guys. How are you? And our special guest for tonight, which is Kyle from the band Aetherius. What's up, guys? Thank you guys for having me on. This is awesome. I'm glad we were able to work this out despite us being all right. over the planet. <laughs> yeah, we're in three different time zones, two continents. So it's a marvel of modern communications. Right. <laughs> Kyle, your second full length album, Laden, was just released last week on January 14th. How is the metal community reacting so far to the new album? Really, really positively, like overwhelmingly so. We weren't really entirely sure how people were going to respond to this. We had a few people who dug Absentia previously, and we spent about three years time working on this one. And, you know, we've been stuck in a bubble for three years. So we've thought, yeah, this stuff sounds awesome. Of course, people are going to enjoy it. But we leaned a little harder into some of the more weirder, dissonant side of our sound for this album. So there were a few tracks were kind of like, oh, God, are people going to hate this? Are they going to think we're up our own asses with these songs or... <laughs> Are they actually going to dig it? But so far, it's been overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, awesome. We love the album, and it's kicking ass, man. It's very strong. It's fluid, and we just love it. Yeah, we loved <laughs> Thank it. You. And I think people might not understand the full structure of it on the first listening, but given time, and if you listen to the songs more than once, maybe if you're not that accustomed to listening to complicated structures, you might find it a little bit difficult to consume, but it's great. I loved it. As a guitarist, I wish I could have just half of your ability because these shreds are crazy man oh, thank you man yeah it's the structure is a little weird um we've talked about it in a few spots but basically melodically it goes from more conventionally melodic kind of tech death style sound kind of like what we had in our previous record and then it just progressively gets more and more dissonant as the album goes on i've jokingly said you go from like a beyond creation to a gore guts kind of verging on portal sort of sound at points <laughs> kind of reflects the uh lyrical concept where you essentially and very simple sense because it's a fucking stupid story I came up with. You have a character that gets ripped out of time and taken into an alien world and slowly just goes insane. So it sort of follows that trajectory right. and it's reflected with the music. Awesome. It starts a bit dense and then it goes, as you said, crazier and crazier or more dissonant is the word you used. And I liked it because it's very particular. You won't describe many albums as dissonant, specifically because music seems to be melodious and, well, you break these schemes and that's the appeal that your band has but the track list of the album is this something you made deliberately or was it a natural outcome of the composition so we had sort of the melodic concept in mind before we even started really like fleshing out the songs i'd started working on i think like the opening riff to behold the world leader back in 2018 three months before absentia even came out so we've been working on a lot of these for a while and we didn't really have any clear artistic direction in the first few months that we were working on it. And then, you know, we're like, hey, what if we had this sort of cool melodic concept underpinning everything we were doing? So we started kind of thinking like, okay, what's going to be like the most extreme end of like the dissonant side? What's going to be the most extreme end of the melodic side? And that's how we would sort of frame some of these songs as we would write them. So, um, you know, for example, Behold the World Eater. That's more towards the middle of the album and like right next to Living Abyss. Those two kind of occupy sort of the best of both worlds in terms of more melodic and more dissonant side of things. And we knew, you know, just as we were writing them, we're like, okay, this, these two songs make sense to be more in the middle of the album if we're trying to match that melodic concept. So we didn't necessarily write them in the order that they came on the album. But as we would listen to them, it became a little more evident where they should go in the album. And then after we figured that out, we would add, you know, little bits of refining to it to help it so that they would all flow together a little more seamlessly. All right. Great meetings discussing what songs should be where, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no arguments, thankfully. We were all pretty much in agreement. Okay. So. <laughs> we know with this pandemic, it's really hard to make plans, but are you planning to make a tour to promote the album? Is there something out there in the plans? It's definitely in the planning stage. We've been trying to get some things solidified for spring. You know, it would just be like a West Coast US thing if we're able to get it to happen. We're trying to maybe get out to the East Coast. We'd like to get out of the country, but Obviously, even for like huge bands, that's impossible. So smaller guys like us, it's going to be even more difficult. And plus, with just so much competition, every band trying to tour right now with all the restrictions, making it just it's super competitive. So the short answer is yes, we are trying to get a tour going to support the album and we want to you know, get back out on the road and play live again. But it's really just kind of up in the air. I think I saw um, 
the decapitated 25th anniversary tour just got canceled over in the UK because of more COVID issues. So yeah, who knows? We'd like to get back out there and get back to normal. Yeah, everything but. is hanging in the air. You can make plans today, but in a second, yeah. they can just be pfft, nothing. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and there's yep. a lot of competition, but also people are anxious to go back to concerts, to go back to the mosh pits, and to listen to the new music that we've been collecting throughout these two years. We have records and records worth of live performances that we haven't been able to experience. So I'm sure even if it becomes a daily affair, people will go to the concerts because we are just anxious to see bands play live. Oh, yeah. yeah, at least in my personal opinion as a fan, I used to work tickets in advance, like months in advance, just to make sure I have the ticket for the show mm -hmm. that I wanted to see. But nowadays, if I do that, if I purchase a ticket, I'm not really sure if that's going to happen. <laughs> it's impossible to make plans two or three months in advance right now. So from the fan perspective, I think the closer the date is, is when you know it's going to happen. So you purchase the ticket yeah. almost on the same week or if not the same day of the show. And that, I guess that sucks for the bands and for the venues because that revenue is not coming the same way that it used to be. Right. Honestly, it sucks for the bands too because you know we still are stuck in a position any any band where we're having to plan this stuff in advance, and it's a lot of best wishes, and we're really hoping. And I had a few friends where like they get to literally you know two three days within the tour starting, and then something happens, and suddenly the whole month worth of work is canceled. It sucks for the venues. It sucks for the fans because now you know you're not getting the revenue coming into the venue, so that's hard for them because they're not getting as I know at least over here. Venues aren't getting as much support from the local government as far as, you know, trying to keep them afloat. Bands were losing out on, you know, potentially thousands of dollars from actually going out there and promoting our music, which, you know, I think a lot of bands invest that back into the band. But it's still, you know, it's a whole bunch of opportunity loss and it just dominoes into this endless cycle of nonsense. Yeah. It sucks. It just yeah, sucks. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It does oh. suck. And I'm sure also that you must be having some riffs that might become your next project. So a concern I might have as a musician is, will I be able to promote this album before the next one comes if we're still stuck in this? Because, well, as a creative person, I'm sure you can't just stay with your arms crossed waiting for whatever happens. I'm sure you're still creating even yeah. more if you're not working on live shows, right? Yeah. I mean, I have the benefit of being in other bands. So, you know, you can kind of sow some of the creative oats in other avenues. Right now, like, honestly, since the album just came out and it took so long to make, I'm not even thinking about new Aetherius music yet. There's a few, like, riffs that I've written, but... I'm not even planning in that point. I'm like, I want to focus on promoting this album and getting it out there as soon as possible. So I'm able to redirect some of that creative energy. Not, I'm not stuck, basically, where, yeah. you know, oh, I'm going to be creating like a whole other album's worth of Aetherius material before we can even tour on, you know, this album. Mm. That kind of hit us with Absentia. We did a tour and a half in 2019 to support it. First one was with The Odious Construct, and then the next one we did a few days with Inanimate Existence and Flub. And that was fun. But we had a whole month-long tour planned for April in 2020, hmm. and we were like, all right, cool, we can start promoting this, and we can start, you know, previewing some new songs, and then obviously, you know, March 2020, everything got shut down and canceled, so we still haven't even really gotten to promote Absentia as well as I would have liked, so it was, we're kind of like two albums behind in terms of right. live promotion. Yeah, it sucks, man. Uh, you guys are based in Tacoma, Washington. Can you give us an idea how the metal scene is over there? Even before the pandemic, it's kind of weird in Tacoma. Um, I mean, most of the metal scene in Washington is kind of based in Seattle. So most of the shows we would play would be up there. There are a few metal bands that are in Tacoma. There's um, obviously us, my other band that I'm in, Blighted Eye, which is like a blackened death kind of Opethy style band. And some of the members from Theories, I'm pretty sure, are in Tacoma. But 15 years ago, it was a little more booming. You had a lot more death metal bands and some mellow death bands and you know, a lot of the metalcore and deathcore stuff was starting to pop up pretty regularly. But nowadays, uh, even before the pandemic, it had kind of just sort of faded away. And Seattle is more of like the main hub. And even that, it's a lot more black metal, doom metal. And, you know, you get some post metal stuff out there. So there are some death metal bands. There aren't really any tech death bands other than us. We're kind of the techie turd in the punch bowl. It is what it is, I guess. We really dig the artwork in the new album. We would like to ask you... Who's the artist responsible for that? And uh, what is the inspiration 
fight as well. Uh, so the artist is Sam Nelson. He did our artwork on Absentia. He's also done artwork for First Fragment, Erroneous, for a bunch of artisan era bands and a bunch of other tech and prog death bands. And he's just a phenomenal dude to work with. And we will probably work with him until we all die because he's just that great of an artist and collaborator. <laughs> as far as inspiration, I gave him sort of a story outline for the lyrics. And you know, I said, so here's kind of the basic idea of like what the album is literally about. Here's sort of, you know, what the deeper meaning is, you know, go wild. I wanted to give him some ideas and just some sort of pointers, but I was also like, hey, you know, I trust your artistic vision, make something that's just going to be kind of crazy and reflect sort of the world of the album. And he just went with it and did his thing. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful piece of art, man. I, I wish I could have something like that hanging on my wall. <laughs> yeah, you can buy it. <laughs> yeah. I'll just have to buy a copy for myself. <laughs> What have you been listening to recently, Kyle? Oh, let's see. So there's a band from Texas called Cathexis that I was <laughs> checking out and really digging quite a bit. They put out an album last year called Untethered Abyss that kicks ass. Uh, there's a band called Blindfolded and Led to the Woods that put out a new album last year. It's a lot of really ugly, gross death metal is what I generally listen to. Mm -hmm. The new Fractal Universe album that came out last year was really cool. That's more in yeah. kind of that melodic realm. Um, With that I, saxophone. I generally, oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I, I generally go towards more of like just the really kind of grating, raw sounding death metal. I'm a big Gore Guts fan and you know I used to play in the band Vitriol. So that stuff is just kind of like my bread and butter. All killer ugly gross music last year yeah we have noticed that from texas there are a lot of bands coming out from there that sound great very aggressive mm -hmm. very deep very ugly as you were saying beautifully yeah. ugly <laughs> we don't know what's going on in texas these days uh, a whole bunch of shit apparently <laughs> in general terms what is something that you love about the metal community and something that you think it sucks and needs to be improve i'd say generally there is a very widespread sense of camaraderie amongst the metal community you know you go to a show you got a bunch of greasy long hairs wearing black all there for the same Not band. Me, yeah that's true that's true <laughs> you got the beard so that makes yeah. up for it but you know you got a bunch of people who are out there stoked on the same music and they can all just kind of even if like the varying levels of appreciation for the music is different from person to person there is just that kind of like that commonality that sort of unites everyone what i think is kind of a, a bummer about the metal scene is that there's a lot of the nitpicking and like subgenre tribalism that tends to go on i think especially in like tech and prog where you get a little air of snooty you know oh we're better than you you know dumb dumb caveman slam people and i think that's just a little stupid i mean if you if you look at it objectively we are playing a type of music that is not appealing to the mainstream it doesn't matter what genre you're playing where you have guitars playing way too fast drums playing way too loud and some guy is screaming at you for you know 30 to 50 minutes so it's an inherently absurd genre that we all just have to kind of accept as sort of inherently absurd regardless of the artistic merit of an individual piece so i think if people could just maybe not get so like super serious about their weird niche subgenre that most people haven't heard of that would be a little better. Right, yeah. We absolutely agree with that. There is people that take things too seriously, and sometimes yeah. even they take it to another level of extreme <laughs> and do crazy things, crazy stuff. I think people just need to relax and enjoy, have fun with the music. I think that's the point of it. I, I think it's it's one thing as an artist to try and create something that, you know, you want to have your artistic integrity. You want to create something that has meaning and value to you as an artist. And if that resonates with someone on a personal level, that's awesome. But I think it's when you're when you're looking at it almost purely from like a consumer level, like, you know, I buy only buy bands that are from this label or I only support bands that are in this genre. You're cutting yourself off from so much stuff that can be just as rewarding. And you're just you're not doing yourself any favors. You're just kind of limiting your experience. I. I love all music and you know regardless of whether it is death metal regardless of whether it is old 70s psychedelic or hip hop or anything like that like every genre has something of value to offer and you shouldn't be so close minded Yeah normally that happens when you're younger cuz I remember when I was younger I didn't want to listen to certain bands because I thought Amen. they were bad or whatever I don't know what what was happening in my brain but that was a while ago keep that in mind yeah, You're talking yeah. talking early <laughs> early days of metal, <laughs> yeah. and then uh, when 
you give yourself the opportunity to start listening to other music, uh, you realize there's so much out there that it's almost forbidden to be is because if you don't listen to that, then I don't know, you are too narrow minded and you don't give yourself the opportunity to enjoy so many different things that are available out there that are awesome. And it's just stupid when you act like that. Yeah, hard agree. <laughs> Okay, talking a bit about gear, what can you tell us? What did you use on this recording? Did you go to the modulator route or did you use amps and cams and all that? Um, so, so for our main rhythm tones, we ended up using a uh, Kemper Profiler. We actually went through two different stages of kind of, or three stages of doing this. I reamped some stuff on my own um, using some of the neural DSP plugins. Um, I had uh, my friend Brody from Rivers and I'll do some reamping for us for just the rhythm tracks. And then Christian ultimately ended up reamping um, the rhythms himself. And we went with a 5153 profile that he came up with. Um, and unfortunately, didn't even use the ones that Brody sent us, even though they sounded great. But the 5153 worked out better for what we were going for. Um, but for all the clean tones, the solo tones, and some of the weird sort of overdrive guitar tones, that was all neural DSP stuff using a mix of the archetype Nolly and the nameless suite, I believe, and also the Abasi archetype. Yeah. Um, bass, I believe, dark glass plug-in for that. And I'm pretty sure that, that covers all of it. Yeah, I asked this because it, it has a very crisp sound. It's very clean, but also it's harsh. But it doesn't sound synthetic. So it has a good balance of modernness and, you know, roughness, which is something that also helps understand the intricate figures you have in some of the song structures. So, yeah, it's very interesting to hear that. Yeah, I mean, if I had, you know, infinite money and, you know, access to a studio, I'm, I'm, I, I love analog gear. So just, you know, setting up a bunch of heads and pedals and trying to, dial things in is I thoroughly enjoy that even if I'm not recording anything but <laughs> you kind of hit on something that I've noticed with a lot of you know newer bands or not newer younger bands I should say that you know are maybe just stuck in sort of that home recording phase I think there's kind of this misconception with plugins and any sort of modeling amps that you know you're just going to get more of that you know synthetic sound it's going to be you know too overly compressed too perfect you're not going to really get any of the resonance that you would from an actual amp and I think if you just kind of go the prefab route where you pick a preset and you just sort of run with that and you don't tweak it at all, you can definitely run into that. But I think if you actually spend time, that's where I think a lot of people kind of, there's a misstep. You know, they don't really want to spend the time to tweak things and dial them in so that they're unique to you. Instead, they're trying to emulate someone else. And in doing that, they just sort of lose that sort of uh, that crucial component of making the tone a little bit more un unique and you know breathe a little bit more. Yeah, their identity. I, I, I like, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, Kyle, are you familiar with any bands from Latin America? Um, I mean, I think Sepultura is probably the only one yeah. that I'm like, you're really familiar with? Christian mm -hmm. is another one. That's, um, that's good enough. <laughs> I mean, that's about it, man. I'm right sorry. <laughs> yeah, the only reason we're asking is because we are from Latin America and yeah. they are uh, doing their best, you know, to expand their music and to reach new audiences and um, we know bands like Sepultura are the most recognized bands in the world but there are tons of other bands that exist and unfortunately they don't have the opportunity to be exposed to a global audience right yeah we, that's why we do it yeah, we try to do that so whenever you have the time check us out uh, I'm sure you're gonna find mm -hmm. some things you love from the south oh absolutely I mean I'm always looking for new stuff. So Great. And um, to end this conversation, would you like to uh, give a final message to the metal community out there? Thank you guys so much for supporting us and supporting this album release. Um, as I said earlier, the response we've gotten has been overwhelmingly positive, more so than any of us could have expected. So, you know, we really appreciate you guys supporting us, supporting places like Metal Remains, supporting extreme music in general. So, you know, please keep doing that. Keep supporting all of us. What about people that don't know you yet, that are going to come to be familiar with your work through this album? Uh, what can you tell them? Well, um, if you've never listened to us before, um, you know we play a very raw, aggressive style of you know progressive technical death metal. If you like bands like Beyond Creation, Obscura, or Gore Guts, then I think we'll be right up your alley. Um, also, if you just like really weird, kind of ugly experimental death metal, you should also find something you'll enjoy. So. Great. That's, okay, my, great. that's my pitch. <laughs> Elevator pitch. Sounds yeah. great. 
Okay, so thank you, Kyle, for your time, for being with us. Thank you to everyone for watching this video. Please subscribe to the band, to us, and make sure to support them, share with your friends that you know that might like them. I'm sure that's a way we can help promote this. Everyone can do it, and we will appreciate if you can do that with our videos as well. Don't forget to watch our weekly podcast, and we'll see you in the next video. Until next time, stay metal!